Hi, Olaf. Hey. Hello, Adam Curtis. Uh, today, I, I welcome you to my channel. Yeah, I have a small YouTube channel, uh, a little bit subscriber. So I want to share your opinion uh, with some Russian athletes yeah, and many followers because you have. So uh, I'm going to tell you now the list of questions uh, that we are having today. Yeah, it's like about training, frequency, volume, nutrition, bulking, cutting maintaining or body fat uh, you know all that good stuff so um, thank you very much for coming to my channel yeah respect for that so let's start how are you doing today i'm good okay so i want to ask you about the training because uh, these days many people they saying that you have to train more frequently like uh, each body part at least twice per week. What do you think about that? Um, yep, uh, I do see that spoken about a lot more now than it was, say, 10 or 20 years ago. Um, from my experience with a lot of clients, um, I get them training everything twice a week on a push-pull leg split. Yes. I, I see it more beneficial for strength than muscle growth. Um, they definitely get stronger faster, but in regards to getting bigger faster, I don't really see a difference as opposed to training everything once a week and just smashing it harder for that one session. Okay. So the intensity is better than volume in your opinion, in that case of uh, muscle building. I'd say in regards to training everything twice a week or in regards to training everything once a week, um, I don't see a difference in okay. regards to muscle growth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like uh, push-pull legs too. You know, many people do this now. Uh, what is your split at the moment? How do you train? Yep. Um, I, I was on push-pull legs for a few years, um, but I've just added an individual arm day into that so i do push pull legs and an extra arm day because my arms have always lagged so when i'm training arms at the end of push and pull i'm always tired and i never do as much as i would usually do for arms at the end so i've added an extra arm day where i just do arms on their own okay okay uh, about the volume, how many sets per week do you think it's the best for the beginner, intermediate, and expert? So, 10, 20? Yep. I would say beginners need more volume and advanced lifters need less volume um, in regards to sets because when you're a beginner, you're learning every, every exercise. Every exercise essentially is a skill. So when you've never done something before, you need to practice it a lot to, to, to get good at it. Um, so for me, I made my best progress as an advanced lifter when I was doing one work set per exercise and I was only training each muscle once per week. So I only had four, four weight training sessions a week and I was doing very, very low volume, one work set per exercise. Total sets per muscle group was – it changed a bit depending on the muscle group. So I couldn't really give you a total sets per muscle group, but it was very low volume, similar to – very similar to Dorian Yates. Okay, I understand. So when you're the beginner, it's better to have more volume and maybe start off with upper lower body split or push-pull legs, yeah, and just concentrate on the technique when you get used to it, yeah? And then yeah, you lower the volume. I think greater frequency and and greater volume when you're a beginner because you're hardly using any weight, you're weak. Yeah. So the fact you're doing lots of sets, it's not a big stress on the body because you're not you're not loading up with heaps of heaps of weight. Uh, I think when you become more advanced and you're squatting two hundred kilograms and stuff, that's a big stress on the body. Um, and you can't expect to do that every day and recover from it. So I think, I think the, the frequency and the volume can decrease as you become more advanced. Okay. 
So uh, now question about the uh, exercises, because many people in Russia, yeah, and they think now that you should not do basic exercises or you can swap them to more isolation or you can choose like exercises, yeah, that is better for you. Choose your own technique, yeah, your own form and, and do it. Like, for example, uh, bench press, deadlift, squat, yeah. They say you don't need squat, you can do like leg press, you can do dumbbell press and stuff like this. So every exercise you can change. Is that true? You can. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. But um, I think the basic free weight exercises uh, should be the basis of your your sessions and you should be doing isolations and you should be doing some machines and you should be doing a bit of everything. But um, I think you should always base your workouts around the basic free weight movements. Okay. Yeah. Um so basically, what uh, rep range do you think is good? Because now, you know, time under tension, yeah, people saying you have to do it like in 40 seconds to get this failure with the technique, tempo. So yeah. you're doing the same technique all the way, the same tempo, and then you hit in failure. So you are not like waiting yet before you can do extra rep. You know, you stand up, wait a little bit, then extra more rep. They say just one way, you do it until failure. And uh, the rep ranges, they say, as a bodybuilder, you don't need to do lower than 10 reps. So between 10 and 20, time under tension, yep. 40 seconds. Yeah? I would say, for me, I tend to stick between 6 to 15 reps. So, yeah, I'll definitely go under 10. Um, I find a lot of people don't go over 10. So they tend to do a lot of low rep stuff. And most people hate doing sort of, 10, 12, 15 reps per set. They just don't want to do it. But I think it can be quite effective for, for muscle growth. Um, I've never done on the regular sort of sets of 15 to 20. Uh, that's just not something I've done regularly. I've done sets of 20 just for something different every now and again, like a set of 20 rep squats just to see what I could get up to. Um, but it's never something I've done on the regular that higher reps. But definitely the the vast majority of my training is all between 6 to 15 reps. Okay. Um, so uh, how do you know when you need to change rep ranges, like from 6 yep. or and when, you, when you go? Yeah. So I tend not to I've, – I've got two ways of sort of, I guess, periodizing my, my rep range. So I like to stick on a certain weight – and just slowly work my way up from, say, six reps to hopefully uh, 15 eventually, and then I'll increase load, take me back down to six reps, and work my way back up the, the rep range until I've increased strength enough to get up to 15 reps again on, the, on that new weight. Um, so I kind of cycle my reps in that way. Um, and at other times of the year, I'll periodize my reps where I'll do say, a couple weeks of 15 reps, a couple weeks of 12 reps, a couple weeks of 10 reps, a couple weeks of 8 reps, a couple weeks of 6 reps. Yeah. So every couple weeks, I'm increasing the load to, to force me to hit failure at a lower rep range. Okay. So uh, do you like to do straight sets or you do like a pyramid? You go up and then you do doing drop set? Always straight sets, pretty much. Okay. So that's, so that's the... The only time I'll pyramid is when I'm warming up. So obviously, if I'm say I'm benching 100 kilograms, I'll pyramid up through my warm ups until I get to my working weight. Uh, but that working weight will tend to be the same for every one of my work sets. Okay. Uh, what about resting time between sets? When you prepare mentally and physically, or you yeah. have time? Um, I would say my rest periods are somewhere between. 90 seconds to three minutes, somewhere in there, depending on the exercise, depending on the body part. If I've just done a heavy set of squats, maybe I'll even rest more than three minutes. Maybe I rest four or five minutes sometimes if I'm really gassed out. Uh, but if I'm doing tricep pushdowns, then I probably only rest one and a half, two minutes between sets. Okay. Do you mix uh, rep ranges in one session or are you stuck? Like if you do six, you do six uh, for a whole period of time. 
or you mix it yep. up sometimes? I definitely mix it up sometimes. So on bench press this week, uh, my rep range was around 8 to 10, um, whereas on bicep curls, I was up to 12 to 15 reps. So it, it's sometimes I'll do the same rep range for every exercise, every body part for a two-week block yeah. and then change every, every rep range the same for another two-week block. Um, at other periods of time, it'll just be different rep ranges for different exercises for different body parts all the way through the session. Okay, understand. Uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, nutrition a little bit, yeah? Uh, there is now now people saying about that you don't need bulking or cutting yeah they sort of saying that you have to do main gaining you know uh greg Dusset, he's doing channel as well he's speaking about that a lot so he's saying you do have to bulk up so making massive profit and then deficit so what do you think about that is it possible to build muscle while you on caloric deficit or, or to build it when you like go to certain uh, body fat level yeah that it's uh, good for you and then you stay on that and just building up slowly or is it better to bulk up and then cut for anyone that's not a beginner lifter i find it very hard to make decent progress if you're not eating at a calorie surplus so for anyone that's intermediate to advanced in their lifting for you to try and grow muscle whilst you're eating at a calorie deficit, in my opinion, is impossible or incredibly slow. Uh, obviously, I'm talking from I'm talking from a natural standpoint here. Absolutely. Um, yes. Maybe if you're pumped full of drugs, then maybe you can grow muscle eating at a calorie deficit. Yes. I, I don't. I still don't think it would be very effective. Um, okay, steroids help increase the speed that you're growing muscle but if you haven't got enough calories that you're consuming to for your body to waste energy building the muscle then it's probably still not going to build a lot um so i would never recommend even for people on drugs to to try and build muscle whilst they're eating at a calorie deficit yes um so uh to what point you should bulk up and when is it time to stop and slowly cut down that's pretty much up to the individual if if someone's really concerned with staying lean then they can only bulk for a certain period of time or put on a certain amount of weight before they're going to want to you know reverse that and, and get leaner again yeah. if someone's happy to, to get quite soft in the off season then they can consume more calories gain weight faster um, and gain more weight over that period of time. Uh, so it's up to the individual. But generally, I would recommend for people wanting to stay lean, half a kilogram per month weight gain. People that are happy to get a bit softer, a kilogram per month weight gain over their bulking phase. Yeah. So very slow yeah. and uh, steady caloric surplus, like 200 Whatever gets you gaining weight at your desired rate. So okay. obviously, obviously the, the metabolism changes a bit over time. So when someone tells me they're eating at a 200-calorie surplus, yeah. um, at some point that same intake is not going to be a surplus anymore. You know, your, your metabolism will, will catch up to what you're eating and obviously you're getting stronger over time, you're growing muscle over time. A 200 calorie surplus is not always going to be a 200 calorie surplus, and you're going to have to increase calories again to 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 make that surplus happen going forward. Okay. Um, people say people say one kilogram a month is very slow. I I don't think it is. If you did that for 12 months, that's 12 kilograms. Yeah. Show me anyone that's gained 12 kilograms of weight in a year and hasn't got fat. If they're an advanced lifter, like that's just that's just doesn't happen. Okay, I understand. Um, do you like a uh, uh, low fat uh, diet? Yeah, like low fat, like 35 grams of fat, yeah, and uh, high oh. carbs, or you like to higher fat, uh, normal carb, normal protein, or ketogenic diet? Like, which one is the best in your in your opinion in bulking and cutting period? I would say somewhere in the middle. 
So 35 grams of fat per day, I don't think my body's going to be able to function properly on 35 grams of fat a day. Um, I'm probably going to have no sex drive. I'm probably going to be angry. Um, yeah, I, I don't see that being an effective way to, to diet um, for a natural athlete. Conversely, if you're eating 200 grams of fat a day and 60 grams of carbs, I would argue why, why do you need that much fat if you're hardly eating any carbs? So my most successful bulk, I was on 400 grams of protein, 400 grams of carbs, and 200 grams of fat per day. So I had my fats very high, um, but I was eating plenty of carbs at the same time. So, yeah. Okay, I understand. Because, you know, some people, what they do now, yeah, they, they go down to very low uh, body fat percent, like 7%, yeah, and they try to main gain that uh, year round, yeah, and, and put on some muscle. So they go to very low fat, yeah, like 35 yeah. grams literally, and they go very high on carbs, yeah, to get that energy. And this is what yep. they staying like year round, but they training very high volume, yeah, very small weights, and they not doing any progress. Yeah, if if you feel good eating that way, and you're making progress, and you feel good, and you look good, and you're making gains, yeah, do it. So it's all um, in, in individual, basically, yeah, depending on how you feel on certain body fat, yeah. Essentially, we're all the same. Yeah. So I, I don't think things should vary that much from individual to individual. Mm -hmm. If you prefer eating keto because you enjoy eating keto, then that's fine. If you enjoy eating ridiculous amounts of carbs and zero fat, fine. But I think most of us should probably eat in a very similar way to, to make the best progress. Yeah, in moderation of everything. What yeah. about protein? Yeah. Uh, do you think how many times a day we should consume protein? Like four times a day, five times a day? Is it protein synthesis? Is it important? And how much? How much of protein yes. per kg? Muscle protein synthesis is very important if you're wanting to gain muscle. So protein is the one macronutrient that you need to take at a somewhat regular interval. So you can eat all your carbs in one go. You can eat all your fats in one go if you wanted to. But you should really split your protein up into multiple feedings throughout the day. Um, obviously, it depends on your sleep schedule. It depends on, yeah, I guess a few things. But um, I think for most people, eating between four to six feedings of protein per day is uh, is the way to go. Yeah. And uh, what space between meals? Is, is it very important, like, as well, uh, to have, like, four hours, two hours between them? Is it necessary to eat straight away after the gym or is doesn't matter when? Just at least you hit four or five times, as long as. Yeah. I think with your, your spacing of meals and especially protein consumption, mm -hmm. uh, there's something called the protein refractory period. So... It's a period after you have a protein meal where your, your protein synthesis spikes um, and then it comes back down to baseline again. Uh, I think that's basically due to the amount of amino acids or leucine in your bloodstream. So there's no point eating every hour. Yeah. Um, you need to space it out a bit more than that and probably th every three hours, every four hours um, is probably – a decent period to have between your feedings. Okay. Um, you know, before sleep, uh, do you have to consume casein, you know, the slow digestive protein? Is it uh, important? No. Uh, no, you don't have to just consume casein. You could have a piece of meat if you wanted to. You could have some eggs. Uh, it doesn't have to be casein. It can be, can be any protein. Okay, so I understand. Um, okay, what do you think about uh, cardio? Like, do you have to do it how, how often and uh, how intense should be? And is it affecting uh, muscle gaining? Yep. Uh, if you're doing ridiculous amounts of cardio, it's going to take away from your body's ability to adapt to your weight training. So if you're doing lots of cardio in the off-season, I would say that's going to have a negative impact on your ability to make progress in the gym. Because your body, your body tries to adapt to the 
stimulus that you give it. And if you're giving a lot of cardiovascular stimulus, then it's going to start making adaptations to be better at doing cardiovascular exercise. Whereas if you're a bodybuilder and you're in the gym, you want your body to adapt to anaerobic style of exercise, resistance training. You want it to grow more muscle, get stronger. So it would be counterproductive to do a lot of cardio if your main focus is getting bigger and stronger. Okay. So that doesn't, that doesn't mean doesn't mean you can't do cardio, but just be mindful of doing a lot of cardio if your main goal is to get bigger and stronger. Yeah. So how many minutes a week should you do cardio? And do you have to at all? Um, you don't have to do cardio if you don't want to. Yeah. Uh, you can, even if you're trying to lose body fat, if you'd prefer just to eat at a deficit and focus more on your weight training, then that's fine. If you want to add some cardio instead of cutting back on calories, then that's fine as well. In regards to minutes per week, I've never, I've never stuck to something specific. But I would say if you're doing more than an hour of cardio a day, that's, that's a lot of cardiovascular activity. If you're looking to grow muscle, get stronger, or even just maintain muscle, if you're doing an hour or more of cardio a day, I think you're probably hindering the results. Okay. Um, now question about the cheap meals, you know, is it good to have a cheap meals, you know, especially when you're dieting, like a, if you go to very big caloric deficit, yeah, and then you do cheap yeah. meals, or is it better to do very little caloric deficit? And is it difference between small caloric deficit on a diet or big one for the muscle? Well? Yeah. So I've, I've played around with this myself over the years. Um, where I've eaten fairly low calories every day and then had one day a week where I had the biggest cheat meal that I could possibly have. Um, and it was fun and it was great from a psychological perspective because it was so enjoyable and exciting to plan this cheat meal and eat everything you could possibly imagine in one go. Um, but it wasn't optimal for my progress in the gym because most days of the week I was eating quite low calories to make up for this one stupid day where I'd eat like 10,000 calories for dinner. Yeah. Um, so I feel it would be much more beneficial and much more optimal uh, in regards to training if you ate uh, a, more calories every day and just didn't have a stupid cheat meal. Um, but cheat meals I find are more of a psychological thing than a physical Uh, the body can put up with a fair bit of abuse. Like you don't need to go out and eat burgers and ice cream. Like physically our body doesn't need that. But mentally it can be a great thing because you enjoy it and it kind of makes it makes the sacrifice of being so regimented throughout the week worth it because you get to have your cheat meal kind of thing. So I've taught myself not to have cheat meals. Uh, it took me a long time to get over that and I felt like it was a massive um, psychological hurdle for me to stop having those big cheat meals every week. Uh, but eventually I, I got over it and I don't even really think about it anymore. It's not an issue. But it was a massive issue for a while. Yeah. Um, okay, so question now about meal preparation throughout the day, yeah? Because uh, there is a, you can eat clean, yeah, like we call it clean, or you can choose the products that you re really like, yeah, and build up from that, like uh, protein, carbs, fat, because it's all calories, yeah, calories in, calories out. So is it better to eat something tasty that you really like to every day, yeah, and build up from that your meal plan, or is it better to eat healthily, like proper food? Okay, well, if we're talking about what's most optimal, I'll say that you should be eating more unprocessed, clean, healthy type foods. Uh, if you're asking what's more achievable for the average person, then they should probably focus more on the foods they enjoy and work that into their calories and their macros um, and obviously try and add as much lean meats and vegetables and stuff like that to the diet as you can. Um but you can't expect most people to eat 100% unprocessed stuff 100% of the time. Um, if you're an elite-level athlete or bodybuilder, um, 
then maybe you should eat like that. Maybe you should force yourself to be uh, a bit more strict and regimented. Uh, but if your average Joe just looking to get a little bit bigger and stronger in the gym or leaner, then you probably don't have to be so restrictive. Okay. Uh, what about salt? Uh, should you control salt intake, like five grams a day, what the recommendation is, or you can eat more salt, or it depends? I don't think salt's too much of an issue. Um, I always use the just the pink Himalayan sea salt. I salt everything. I don't know how many grams of salt I have per day, but it's a lot. Um, obviously, there's no calories in salt, so you're not going to get fat from eating salt. Uh, some people have issues with salt and their blood pressure. So I think if you've got issues with high blood pressure, you probably need to moderate your salt intake because it can cause issues. My father is like that. He has like one salty meal and his blood pressure goes through the roof. Um, yeah, he's got, he's got, he's always had issues with his blood pressure. He's, he's lean, he's healthy, he's fit, he exercises heaps. He's just got, he's had high blood pressure his whole life. Okay. Um, about sleep. Yeah. How, how often should you sleep and uh, how important sleep for uh, bodybuilding? Like, do you need to go in the same time every day and wake up just when you wake up without alarm? I think being in a routine in regards to your sleep is quite important. I think the body gets used to sleeping during certain times. So whatever times you're used to going to bed and what you're used to waking up, your body will sleep. You'll have a better quality of sleep during those hours than if you just tried to go to sleep during the middle of the day, for example. If, if you're not used to sleeping at certain times, then your body will probably struggle to get the same quality of sleep at those times than your, your regular sleeping pattern. Uh, I think people really underestimate sleep in regards to how important it is just for physical and mental well-being. Uh, obviously, we, we grow muscle while we're sleeping. So the stimulus is in the gym. The nutrients and energy obviously comes through our nutrition, but the, the muscle's not recovering and growing unless we're sleeping enough. Um, and if you're not sleeping enough, then your, your energy levels will be down and you won't be training as well. So the, the stimulus to grow muscle will decrease as well. So for me, I always put sleep as my number one priority. Uh, nutrition was number two and training was number three for me. Okay. Uh, now, speaking of recovering, yeah, uh, nowadays a uh, new study is saying that you should not stretch and warm up, yeah, like move around uh, before exercise. You should, they say, stretch after you finished exercise. What do you think about that? I think stretching when you're warm is more beneficial for improving your flexibility because once the muscle's been warmed up and you've taken it through certain ranges of motion, then you'll be able to stretch it further and you'll be able to improve your flexibility. Before exercise, so. yeah. No, I'm talking about, well, I'm talking about after. I'm talking yeah. about stretching after you've warmed up or after you've trained. You'll probably get more out of that stretching than you would if you stretched cold first thing in the morning. Yeah. Um, in regards to not stretching before exercise, I think the studies that stated that, I think were done on mice or rats and they literally put the, the muscle on a maximal stretch for like 20 minutes straight before they got these mice or rats to do whatever they were trying to get them to do. So we tend not to stretch a muscle for 20 minutes straight, like we stretch it for 20 seconds. So I'm not sure how relevant that study was in regards to stretching decreases performance because we, we don't stretch the way they stretch the animals in that study if you're referring to the same thing that I'm familiar with. Um, so if you've got issues with mobility and flexibility and say you can't get your arms on the bar when you squat, well, then you probably have to go through some warming up and stretching exercises so that you can squat more effectively. So you, you're going to have to stretch out your shoulders and your chest and whatever else to, to get into that position on the bar. Yeah, in that situation, stretching before exercise is very important because you won't be able to exercise effectively if you didn't. Um, if you don't have any real specific issues with mobility or flexibility, then I would stretch more after exercise than before. 
Okay, understand. Um, also, yeah, some people they they saying, uh, especially in Russia, yet yeah, they saying that you should uh, sometimes train like once per two week. They saying that after hard workout, yeah, you have to recover for ten day, ten days or twenty days. So they say if you work to failure, yeah, very hard set, you should recover longer and you can't uh, rest. So they asking you question: Is it different um, than resting time between? Small training, yeah, and hard training, really hard. Yes, hundred percent. So, if I go into the gym and I do a very light weight for ten reps on whatever exercise, let's say bicep curls, for example, let's say I curl twenty kilos for ten reps, barbell curls, um, and that's all I did for biceps that day. Well, I could train biceps the next day. And be fine because I've caused no damage to the muscle, and I, I probably didn't even have anything to recover from. Like there's there's just nothing, nothing's been broken down. There's there's no micro tears in the fibers. I can come in later that day and train again if I wanted to. Um, whereas if if I've done thirty sets to failure on my biceps, uh, maybe I would need an incredibly long time to recover from that. Um, whether that's three days, whether it's five days, seven days, ten days, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I've never really read any studies in regards to resting like seven or eight or nine or ten days after training and whether ten days rest is more effective than seven after incredibly intense high-volume training. Uh, I've never really read much about, yeah, really long rests between sessions. Okay. Uh, what do you think about genetics? How the genetics is important in bodybuilding and how you understand that? So, you know, bone structure, yeah, uh, muscle belly attachment, uh, growth response, like, do you look round or no? Do you should think about that as a natural bodybuilder or you just train and you're getting bigger, bigger, but you can just look uh, not uh, uh, as good as competitive bodybuilders and that's it, but you're going to grow. Yeah. So obviously we're all we're all slightly different in regards to our skeletal structure, the shape of our muscle bellies, the length of our muscle bellies, our natural testosterone levels, myostatin levels, everything. You know, there's variations between individuals. And you'll see you can see two people go into the gym at the same time, they both do the same training, they both eat relatively the same, and after twelve months, one guy's gained ten kilos of muscle, the other guy's gained two. Um, you're like, wow, these guys are doing the same thing. One of them's grown a hell of a lot more than the other one. Um, so the rate at which you can grow muscle, I find varies a bit from individual to individual. Um, and it's obviously not one thing. It's a combination of many factors. Um, so genetically, you can get... <laughs> someone that's very, I guess, um, suited to being a bodybuilder. And you can get someone that's not very well suited to being a bodybuilder um, in regards to muscle growth and in regards to, like you said, structure and muscle shape and size and all the rest. Um, obviously, we can't change our genetics. So when you're comparing yourself to, to someone else, you need to keep in mind that, well, I can't change my skeletal structure. I can't change the shape of my muscle bellies. Um, but what I can do is I can improve on whatever I was last week or last month or last year. So you can always get better. Uh, whether or not you're going to be better than someone else, I can't, I can't say that. Um, but everyone can improve on themselves. Okay. Um, the next, next question is uh, about the range of motion. Do you need to do full range of motion or you can do half range of motion and the speed of uh, making exercise? Like some people do like slow negative, uh, uh, you know, they do like two seconds negative and very strong explosive on a movement, yeah? Some do very fast, some do cheating, yeah? So which one you think is the best? And is it yeah. can be various to different people? Okay, so if we're talking about what's optimal for muscle growth again, I think full range of motion is always better than a reduced range of motion. Um, and then everyone's range of motion is going to be slightly different as well. Not, not everyone can squat, can back squat, bum to the floor. 
you know, but if you've got the structure and the mobility to squat ass to floor, mm -hmm. then you should squat ass to floor all the time. Um, I think when you can take a muscle through a greater range of motion, then you'll get better stimulation of that muscle and better growth, better strength gains. In regards to tempo, uh, I think, again, for muscle growth, slow controlled negatives are very important. Um, that's generally where you get the, the muscle damage happening on the negative portion of an exercise. So if you're just dropping the weight through the negative and not controlling it and not keeping tension on the muscle, I think you'll severely reduce the effectiveness of your training in regards to being a bodybuilder. Okay, I understand. Uh, the, one, one of the questions here, yeah, because uh, you're a lifetime natural bodybuilder, yeah? Uh, you was always natural. Uh, I was following you like many years, like over 10 years. I, I, I was watching you. I see you as a natural bodybuilder. I did write you after I saw this uh, message, you know, the English blog he was posting on YouTube channel yeah, and saying that, oh, natural my ass, you know, uh, no way you are natural. And I saw your response. Yeah, you did uh, just quotes yeah, and you showed uh, why you look the way you look yeah, because it's uh, always training, training hard, going through the pain. So um, I'm asking you the question, yeah, what do you think about uh, testosterone replacement therapy? Do you think of doing that anywhere, like in the future or never, like? And is it yeah. good or is it bad? What do you think about this? I get asked this all the time. Uh, like, are you going to get to a point where you're old and, you know, your muscles slowly decreasing and you're getting weaker? Yeah. Uh, will you take testosterone replacement therapy or... You know, I, I've never had my testosterone levels tested. Um, I've been asked heaps of times over the years, get your testosterone levels tested just because people are interested. Yeah. Because I'm, because I'm a decent natural bodybuilder, everyone assumes that I've got high testosterone levels. Um, I don't know whether I do or not. I've never had it tested. Um, if in 10, 20 years' time uh, I felt like I had an issue uh, and I got tested and I had low tests, um, I, I still don't think I'd take testosterone replacement therapy. Naturally, our testosterone decreases as we get older. Like, that's just part of life. Yeah, um, um, yeah I just assume I'll get smaller and weaker when I get old. Like, that's just what happens. Um, I might change my mind, uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been bothered to take testosterone yet, and I just don't see why I'd suddenly change my mind in the future. Yeah, that's uh, very cool because, you know, you have uh, one of the greatest physiques on the planet, yeah? Not just like a natural bodybuilder, but even some people on gear, yeah, they not look even close uh, like that, uh, you know, your level is. So people, yeah, some people, they think, oh, it's no way you can be natural, but this is genetics, this is just how it is. And it's very yeah, cool that... Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, anyway, we are going to get um, old and weak, even on testosterone replacement therapy. This is going to just happen. Yeah, exactly. We all get old and weak eventually. Um, and, yeah, there's plenty of guys on gear that look a lot worse than me. <laughs> uh, but those people obviously don't eat and don't train very well either. Uh, if you get someone that's super dedicated to their nutrition, their training, their sleeping, um, then if you load that person with gear, I'm sure they'd look pretty good. Uh, but you can't make up for a shit training, shit diet and no sleep with drugs because you're just, yeah, you're just trying to fast track nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, do you watch like uh, YouTube? Do you have like some people that you follow in fitness industry and uh, which ones if it's not secret? Um, not really. Uh I like I like watching clips of Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. <laughs> he, just, I, I love watching him train. He just loves training, and it's just cool to watch him push heavy weights. Um, the only person that I watch their stuff on the regular at the moment is Zach Perner. Um, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with Zach, but yeah. I trained I trained Zach for a while back when he was a bit younger. Um, and I watch some of his stuff just because he's actually entertaining. Uh, he's actually, I don't laugh at many people. I don't find many people very amusing, but um, Zach can actually make me laugh. So 
I like watching some of his content. Yeah, uh, you was making video with him. Yeah, I think uh, eating a burger. Yeah, and chips. Yeah, we, yeah. There's yeah. a few videos of us together uh, doing a few different cheat meals, and there's one giant burger um, <laughs> yeah. that I end up yeah vomiting at the end. So that's that's a that's an entertaining clip if you can be bothered watching it. Uh, yeah. Uh, what What is your favorite meal? Like, what do you like to eat? Like, what do you eat throughout the day? Do you plan everything like super strictly? Until, until this day? Yeah, I tend to eat the same thing pretty much every day. Um, every meal of the day tends to be quite different, um, but most days are very similar to the last kind of thing. Um, and if I get sick of something, I change it. You know, if I get sick of chicken, I'll change to fish. If I get sick of fish, I'll change to kangaroo. If I don't like eggs anymore, I'll swap them out, you know. Um, but generally every day is very similar and it's, I know my portions of this and I know my portions of that. So, yeah, it's just easy for me to, to eat in a very similar way day to day. Do you weight food all the time? Do you count calories, uh, protein, fat and carbs? I'm not weighing a lot of stuff at the moment because I tend to cook a certain portion of foods that will last. Так, Аарон у нас сейчас немного пропал почему-то по какой-то причине. Так, надо подождать. Итак, дорогие друзья, вот у нас сейчас интервью с Аароном. Так, Аарон Кертис вылетел сейчас. Okay, so I think we have to maybe wait a little bit when uh, Aaron Curtis reconnect. Okay, so yes, we just wait a little bit. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, all good? Hey, we're back. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you don't wait food at the moment? I weigh it before I cook it. And then I tend to cook like a certain number of portions of a food. So I know that it's going to last me the next three, four, five, seven days, whatever. So it's all weighed before I cook it. And then I'll just roughly portion it out throughout the week. So it ends up lasting, lasting me the right amount of portions. So... Over the week, everything sort of equals out. But from day to day, I might eat slightly more sweet potato today than I will tomorrow. But um, over the course of the week, it's all, it's all accounted for. Okay. And a question about the sports nutrition, you know. Uh, what do you think is good to take as a natural athlete or in general? Yep. Uh, well, protein powder. If you're not getting enough protein through your foods, then protein powder can be quite useful. I think creatine monohydrate proven to be performance enhancing so important and beneficial to use as a bodybuilder or if you're like a sprint athlete or something like that uh caffeine pre-workout uh shown to decrease your perception of fatigue allow you to train harder for longer so i mean all the pre-workouts are full of caffeine um if i had to choose three things yeah stick with those okay i understand well aaron That's uh, pretty much all the questions that uh, we had to you. Thank you very much for coming. Big respect. You have uh, plenty of fans in Russia. Yeah, people watching you, they want to look like you. So just uh, tell them something, you know, last word before we say goodbye. Um, if you want to look like me, then eat at a calorie surplus and progressively overload for about the next 10 years. And I reckon you might get there. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for coming, you know, and uh, sharing your time. I'm very grateful. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Have a nice yeah. day. You too. Ну, вот как-то так, ребята. Вот такой мы провели стрим. 
Так, напиши. Окей, can you tell me in the comment section, please, how to how to finish stream and save it up so we can watch this one later. Yeah, hello everyone. Yeah, of course, Aaron uh, natural. This hundred percent, he's natural because I've been uh, watching him since I was uh, like teenager. Yeah, and I was I was seeing uh, watching uh, him making steady progress. Yeah, all the time he looks the same all the time. Just sometimes he bulk up a bit and then cut down, but he's hundred percent natural. Okay, so I ask now in Russian, you know, some people that uh, watch uh, right now. Пацаны, блин, как закончить стрим и сохранить его? 